Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Music Connection. It's been a week since we last saw you, and so much has transpired that has us uh, thinking and contemplating and acting. And uh, we believe that music is what's going to help us get through a lot of the heartache and a lot of the difficulties. And we have an amazing couple uh, that is going to help us uh, translate this anguish and this discomfort into good things and i'd just love to say this this, this group i want to uh, introduce them to mo in a moment but uh they have three uh chart topping albums uh, over the years in the jazz and and, and world music world and uh we uh we'll, we'll tell you more about how we met these folks but uh, we're, we're just thrilled to make this connection so and please welcome lynn Verano and ken avis hi. hi how are you guys oh my hi, gosh hi louise george how are you oh uh, we're, we're delighted as, to have you here we are you're you're a breath of fresh air in this in this oh in this moment. thank you we're so and, happy to be with you guys it just reminded me when you said both jazz and world music it was like the old willie nelson joke and he played <laughs> both kinds of music country and western <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, I've I've a feeling, having read a little bit of your bio, Ken, that you, you you've got some stories about that you know that circuit as well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's, it's so great to have you with us today. Well, so so tell us Thank a little you. bit about um, what is your earliest memory of uh, understanding that music was going to be an integral part of your life. Wow, that's that's a good question. Uh, do you mind if I go first? You go. Because I've been watching your other interviews and I knew that was coming. So, <laughs> which are they're, they're wonderful, by the way. I love I love what you guys are doing. Um, I have this very vivid memory of being uh, dragging a chair up to the kitchen counter, climbing on the chair, and pulling the radio to me, and just being absorbed in that world and conducting. And I I just felt connected to. A completely different universe. My family was not musical. There was very little music in my house, except occasionally through the radio and a little later through, uh, you know, um, jazz records. And that moment, I just remember, that's it. That's it for me. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be in the radio. I remember that too. <laughs> How do I get in there? Little people. Yeah, I thought there were little people in there. <laughs> oh my gosh! And did you start out in classical music? I believe. Were you I did. Yes. Classically trained. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I took um, uh, classical voice, uh, studied Italian opera, and uh, that was just a wonderful foundation that I still use today. Uh, the vocal technique, uh, the breathing. Uh, the, the phrasing, you know, how to carry the drama through a sentence. Beautiful. Uh, but since then, many different mm -hmm. genres. I've studied um, many different types of music and um, a lot of jazz, a lot of, uh, a lot of West African music, a lot of French music, obviously. So there's a little bit of lots of different ingredients in my musical world, I guess. And it's funny when we met. We met in Switzerland, and uh, Lynn was on the on the tipping point of that opera to the rest of the world music. So she was doing her opera things part of the time, and then she was singing in a funk band in smoky <laughs> bars in the evenings, which she told me her opera teacher hated this and was saying, "You're ruining your voice. You're ruining your voice. You'll never be an opera singer again." She was and, right. Uh, <laughs> <you know, laughs> <laughs> career path split yes by the time i left switzerland lynn was still there and she was singing in a blues band I know, in geneva I know, I know. and she was referred to as little mama because she was, oh my gosh she was, Thanks, this, she was in this bar <laughs> by the ken, by ken the will now exit Railway the interview <laughs> <laughs> well, wait you have to tell us his musical journey that's right and she was singing on tables. She was standing on tables. I was not. Oh, okay, I'm no. making it up now. <laughs> Your turn. Your turn. It was a stage. That's for our next interview. Maybe a documentary. Yeah. yeah. Okay, your turn. No, for, for me also, not a musical <laughs> family. I only remember two records. My sister tells me there were more records, but I remember that my family had two records. One was Mantovani's Greatest Hits, 
which never impressed me that much. And the other one was the Brenda Lee Christmas oh, album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love Christmas songs to this day, you know, the Brenda Lee, all that rocking around the Christmas tree and things. But then when I was about six, the Beatles brought out Rubber Soul. And because I'm from that end of England, you know, about 20, 30 miles from Liverpool, the music was great, but it was more than that. The Beatles were a social movement for people with an accent like mine because we were the, I don't know what you call us, we were considered as like the rednecks of Britain being from the <laughs> north of England. And then if you remember those Beatles films like Hard Day's Night, they would be down in London because everything was London and upper middle class and those accents. And the Beatles were running circles around the BBC people on that in that film. And it was like, yes, this is a revolutionary <laughs> moment, you know? People with accents like mine can rule the world. Yes, we and we will. Oh my goodness, that's, <laughs> that's great. They amazing. Did. Yeah. And they did. So that's what got me into music for sure, hearing that kind of not just the music, but the 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 social importance of the music. Um, mm. I don't think a lot of people realize that for us in the north of England, the Beatles were our football team, our political vehicle out of obscurity. They they were everything for us. Mm. Yeah, I did not well, know that. Bob Marley of you Jamaican, I guess, you know, it's the same kind of thing. <laughs> and then what took you to Switzerland, Ken? Um, work. Lynn and I both went the wrong way around. We did music and then we did day jobs and raised families and so on. And uh, I was working for a um, very socially sensible company, British Petroleum, BP. And they moved me from London to Paris to Geneva and... Uh, and then they told me I had to go back to England and I quit there and then. I said, I'm not going back to England. I'm living in Switzerland. It's great. <laughs> Love it. Switzerland is nice. Uh, um, uh, my sister lives in Geneva and, um, and we have a connection with Northern England. My father went there for university for his undergrad to Lancaster University. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's just up the road from me. And yeah. that musically, um, do you remember like in those 70s, 80s, universities were where bands played i mm -hmm. think it was the same in america we'd all sit cross-legged on the floor to watch the bands and uh lancaster Uni university was like a 40 minute drive so when i was about 16 me and my mates would go up there we would see van morris and nils lofgren the average white band all of those bands live at lancaster university usually sitting cross-legged on the floor <laughs> that's right that's right well uh, i am actually very awestruck by your um, your your music library. There is a lot of Brazilian music, but it's also unknown Brazilian music. Where does that come from? Where is that influence and that mm -hmm. desire to expose some of those uh, numbers? Um, you know, it's sometimes it's just the song itself. The song is so beautiful. It strikes me, and I I really want to do it. Um, one of my favorite is Elu uh that I first heard done by Rosa Passos, and she is just to me she is the epitome of, of of singer singing a song. She just delivers it with so much weight and intention and she accompanies herself on guitar like she, she plays so so well i i've become a huge fan of of uh what she does and i'm i was thinking if rosa's doing it i better do it i better try not that i can beat her but if it, it's a good one i better try it so i've been uh i've been following a little bit her uh her repertoire and uh i am so struck by what she does. Rosa Passos, you, you please link her uh, below so folks can discover her. We will, we will. I, I think it's an interesting idea and I think having such a multicultural influence, both of you coming from different places and embracing uh, multicultural expression really is what uh, is at the bottom of an artistic expression, which mm -hmm. I think is what we all need and desire to be around. Mm -hmm. So. Why don't we offer our friends and families uh, your talents? This deliciousness. Sure, sure. Thank you. So, um, you know, with everything that's been going on this week, uh, we've been um, we've been marching today. Uh, we were at a march, um, a march for unity, and uh, I've been a supporter of Black Lives Matter, and. Uh, 
I wanted to find a song in our repertoire that would convey to to uh, to your listeners uh, that it. It's not always all the big things, and sometimes we don't have all the answers. Uh, but we need to try. We need to try to make a difference. And uh, I, I, I realize I don't really have a socially minded song in my repertoire, but I'd like to dedicate what a difference a day makes in that spirit. So this is our arrangement. What a difference. The day makes 24 little hours Brought the sun and the flowers Where they used to be red My yesterday was blue deep But now I'm part of you my loneliness is through the Since you said you were mine What a difference a day makes There's a rainbow above me Skies above can't be stormy Since a moment of bliss that thrilling kiss It's heaven when you Find romance on your menu What a difference a day makes And the difference is you It's you, you, the people watching at home, each and every one of us. That's what's going to make a difference. Exactly, exactly. And I'm so happy you guys got the ticker going uh, about uh, the various uh, organizations that we are supporting right now. Uh, one of them is Black Lives Matter. And uh, another one, uh, an organization we've worked with for uh, six years, and it would have done their annual fundraiser last night is uh, Jose Andres World Central Kitchen. Um, annually they do their big dine and dash party. And uh, we just 
admire the work that they're doing. Currently, they're in Minneapolis also, you know, feeding demonstrators. They're in the Bronx, they're in DC. Uh, they do such a wonderful job. So if your listeners are are inclined, if you're able to uh, to donate some money, please consider organizations that are working for change. Absolutely. And uh, I, it's, it, it really is, um, it, it doesn't matter how much, what it matters is that, that one does, um, that we all make a, a tiny little effort to really contribute either monetarily or in spirit or in support in action. and in action. There is lots of, of activities that we can be part of and contribute to the betterment of our, our society. Yes. Um, and uh, we cannot do it alone. We have to work with one another and we have to forge connections. Uh, and this is one way to do that. Um, Absolutely. So how is going to, I believe the music and arts is what's going to save humanity. It's in my core. And the more I talk to people, the more I feel it, the more I desire it. Um, what is Vera now going to do to keep that feeling alive? Wow. Well, as, as you can imagine, there's a lot of things up in the air right now. So um, for the foreseeable future, we have no live concerts. Everything has been uh, canceled. Uh, so we are doing certain activities online like this and um, looking also at doing, um, I'm going to be part of Community Day of uh, Songwriters Association, where we're going to do be doing some teaching online and connecting with people. And uh, that's that's part of it. Tell us a little bit of the stuff you're, you're thinking of doing. Yeah, there's one thing that Lynn and I have both been doing for a few years in it's giving back, but it's something we enjoy enormously as well, is we've both been mentors to young professional musicians for the Strathmore Artist in Residence program. So I'm just closing out my year of mentoring. Uh, I've had two fabulous uh, young professional musicians, one of whom just got the Guardian Newspapers Album of the Year, or oh, Album of the Month fantastic. Award. Uh, and another one's this incredible Russian-American violinist. Um, and their, their final, because they get a month of performance at Strathmore, and that's been delayed due to the virus, so my year's going to be longer. But Lynn's already taking on two musicians for next year as a mentor, um, one from uh, Albania and one who's a Chinese vocalist, both amazing vocalists. So that's an activity that we'd love to be involved in. Mm, that's and, wonderful. And I think the, the quarantine's been really interesting, Um and it's made a difference to us, actually. You know, we're kind of rethinking a little bit how we perform and what we do, because as professional full-time musicians, pre-quarantine, 70% of our time was not spent making music. It was actually spent on the computer marketing and promoting yes. music. And uh, one aspect that we've enjoyed is doing a little bit less of that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we're thinking about what ways can we actually be out there making music and, and I think part of it, we've had a couple of invites to play where just individuals have contacted and said, will you come and play in my driveway? I'm going to do a live show for the neighbors. We'll all be six foot apart at least. And so we've done two of those for different people uh, in, in neighborhoods. And, next, uh, um, next, and it's great. Sorry. It's great. I'm I just saying there's yeah. no marketing involved. You just go and you do it and you con connect with people. And, uh, and it's, it's been fun. That's been really heartwarming, actually. And next to Friday, we're going to be performing for the DC Jazz Fest. Uh, again, we're going to be, uh, it's going to be just Ken and me, not the full band, because we haven't, they're not part of our social uh, bubble. And um, it's it's nice to see that some organizations are uh, trying to uh, support musicians and um, allocate the funds that they would have otherwise allocated to a, uh, a live festival in different ways. We've done that also for Alexandria Jazz Fest, mm -hmm. who, um, who supported our very first live stream. Um, so one aspect of that is it's very clear that um, performers are going to need to uh, up their skills uh, on how to work with the various platforms, which ones are best for them, uh, work on their performance skills for that format, because it, it feels so... You know, we, we are so far apart. We feel so disconnected. So we need to do a little bit of work there. And hopefully the various platforms also 
follow and improve so that you know we we don't have pixelation we can we can rehearse together right now it's not possible mm -hmm. um so there's things to there's things to consider uh, to look forward to perhaps and in a way i feel we all need to kick our butts to improve our online presence you know we should have tons of video out there that are well produced not not phone videos taken you know at the concert but um it's it's a big change it's mm -hmm. obviously the worst part it's affecting the revenue stream mm -hmm. sure. tickets are not Absolutely. being tickets are not being sold um hey, but we're spending a lot less money as well it's all balancing <laughs> the credit card bill is much smaller <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh i i believe that uh creativity really comes to shine when it's presented with constraints and so this is a great opportunity this is a new era uh, just like we have the romantic and the classic eras and the renaissance this is we don't have a name for it yet, mm -hmm. but this is absolutely a new era where, where we are pushing it to where it needs to go uh, for the foreseeable future. I just had a call from a theater that is looking for playwrights to write three-person plays that could be formed on fire escapes. <laughs> oh my gosh, and really? Isn't that a wonderful uh, con you know, concept? Uh, again, like you were saying. Also, we yeah, it's, 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 yeah. A, friend, a friend of mine who's a filmmaker, um, came up with an idea recently and he said there's so many filmmakers who are, can't go out and shoot, musicians who can't go out and play. And he came up with a project which is called the Seven Tones Project, where he invites musicians and filmmakers to work together uh, recording Duke Ellington songs. And the reason he calls it the Seven Tones Project, it's exactly what you were saying, Elsie Lewis. Um, Duke Ellington once said, there are only seven tones in the <laughs> musical scale. And he would treat songwriting as a solving a, a puzzle. But he said, you've got the constraint of only seven tones to work with. Right. How do you make it sound different? How do you change the time in the rhythm, the feel of those seven tones to make each piece of music different? Uh, and so it really, it really reminded me when you said that about constraints creating art that, uh, it has done, and, and a lot of these musicians and filmmakers are working together who would never have met each other in the past yeah, as well. So that's been true. another yeah. good effect of the construction. Absolutely. Well, but, if you if you haven't been uh, at our neighbor's driveway concert a couple of weeks ago, we would never have that's right. crossed paths. That's how we met you way, all. So. Oh, that's, yeah. that's how we crossed paths. But we <laughs> have masks. We've had guys on masks on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. And if you hadn't sung uh, Luxus, so I would not have melted to the ground and in a puddle and and uh, there's there's other projects i'd like to talk about if that's okay with you guys uh yes, friends, friends of ours created a jam session uh, a few years ago that they they moved online now and every single week now they're hosting a jam session where they invite about three different musicians to perform live from from, from wherever they are and in between the le week leading to there's a challenge it's it's more of a like a personal challenge where they put out a theme and you post on their Facebook. They've created an incredibly vibrant community that way. And the Creative Cauldron right um, near us in Falls Church hosts uh, talent shows where you're submitting videos. You're not, some, you're not doing live performances and you submit your videos ahead of time and you can be an eight-year-old musical theater uh, amateur. You can be a 90-year-old uh, Whistler or whatever it is, and they've created again a vibrant community, and I love watching those. I just love they. F they feel very real and authentic, and very embedded in the community. It's it's just wonderful work. That's well, and beautiful. that's that's the other thing that this has created an opportunity to access right. There's so many performers yes. who don't even get to be experienced because it because of constraints of other kinds. And, and now you can you can have your own stage yeah. and, and do what you need to do. But uh, we're thinking we're going to do a quarantine every year, you know, a full <laughs> week of quarantine, you know. a big pause button, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you found it positive? Have you got some kind of constructive things from it yourselves? I mean, this is a new thing, I guess, born of the quarantine. Well, yes, and and uh, for me, I do so much training uh, of teachers 
in person and I've had to convert everything to an online format. And it's just uh, it's just making me really pull out some tricks and things that I had never thought of uh, mm -hmm. before and how to present material in an engaging way that uh, is meaningful to folks. And you, you, you peel the layers to the actual uh, what, what, what's really relevant and, and purposeful. So there is no fluff. Um, you have no time and you need to go straight to what, what matters. And, and I think that's one of the things that really is um, mm. sort of coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and it, it's also sort of giving ourselves uh, an opportunity to redistribute priorities in a way that, that makes sense for the times we live in and, and the things that make us happy and, and fulfilled. So, and I have to say, my, my, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Ken. I'm going to say one of the things that's taken a lot of our time during this is gardening. And <laughs> uh, we actually dug a pond. It was my birthday on May the 3rd, and Lynn oh. gave me a birthday card which said, your gift is to dig a pond. So basically, <laughs> she handed me a shovel. And Happy birthday, there's your shovel. <laughs> <laughs> And we've got this beautiful pond now, which is giving us so much pleasure. Yeah. We've spent oh, so much time. We've created so, a new send us some pictures of it, would you? We'll do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> and and uh, we we so look forward to uh, continuing to to stay in touch with you all and follow you all. And you we we've just become just huge huge fans in in a, in a short time. And, and oh, if you would, I was thinking you're welcome. I'm thinking the young artists you mentioned. If you if you, you want to send any links for them. Yes, uh, yes, I will close. be expecting them. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's worth spreading the words because they, their their work is amazing and, and everybody's doing it in a very uh, open spirit. So it's just about collaborating and making things happen for ourselves. And everybody's just very generous and you know there's no there's no pretense in, in their work, very authentic. It's it's very enjoyable. Well, we have enjoyed this, uh, this time with you, and we are so thankful that you were willing to come on and share your amazing talents. Oh, you have so a sweet. wonderful tone, and Ken, you are ridiculous on that guitar. <laughs> so we are... I, I know I'm sick about it. You need to practice your guitar so you can play it to me in the kitchen. You know? <laughs> That's like cook. Yeah. Uh, it's and we cannot wait to see you back on the stage in the near future. Uh, we'll tune Strap, in more Blues Alley, all the places you've played before. I know you'll be back in those houses in no time. around yeah. the world at some point. And until then, we'll so, see you on the interwebs. That's right. And people are want, saying, Oh, we want, do you want us to play out? Do you want would, us you, to, would you play? Sh please, please do. Luscious song. Oh, yes. That's oh, my gosh. Thing. I will have to get off the screen because I'll cry. <laughs> you, you could dance. <laughs> it's a good answer. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for having us. You guys are wonderful. Olia, it's a mulata quando danza e luce sa quando. Su corpo si balanza e luce so te. Un asse che che fai a confusa. Che la notte mi do si compasso. Esa mulata bamba, olia, olia, olia. Esa mulata cuando usan el lujo so. Cuando tú, todo su cuerpo se balanza. El lujo so, por él. Son quando sale gita e palpita non cavi con passo tan brasileiro e te samba capra da capra da capra da capra da capra da capra da capra
that we'll put down do so it's important and uh, we love you so much and we'll be back and in the near future with more music connection for everyone wonderful Bye, everyone Bye. thank you guys thank you. <laughs>